Genesis chapter 3. Let us read verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We have established from our previous teaching that Satan sold Eve half truth. Okay, Satan concealed the whole truth from Eve. I mean, Eve should have asked, do we have the right to, or are we equipped for this knowledge that the devil is offering us? And would that knowledge truly bring them God's power? Would that knowledge truly bring them God's wisdom? Because we all know that knowledge without power or wisdom to do something about it will only result in shame, will only result in fear, will only result in pain. If you have the knowledge of something and you don't have the power to change that thing or you don't have the wisdom to do something about it, what is the use of the knowledge? It only results in frustration. If somebody gives you a vision, if somebody gives you a dream and it causes you to be afraid, what is the use of the vision if you cannot do something about it? So knowledge by itself the devil was promising them that they will know good and evil. Knowledge by itself does not guarantee happiness if it is not accompanied by power or if it's not accompanied by wisdom. So this is the type of question Eve should have been asking herself. Praise the Lord. So today we are going to look at the third part of this trinity of lies of the devil. Knowing good and evil. Knowing good and and evil. And like we said, knowing good as and evil is predicated on the first two lies of the devil. The first lie that your eyes will be open, the second lie that you shall be as God. So the devil told them, Your eyes shall be open, you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. So what does knowing good and evil mean? What does it mean? What sort of extra knowledge is promised when their eyes are opened? It cannot simply be the knowledge of right and wrong. Because Eve already knew right and wrong. I mean, she knew that God prohibited them from eating from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Eve, know, Eve knew that it was wrong to eat from that particular tree. She knew it was right to eat from all other trees in the garden. So this knowledge is not simply the knowledge of right and wrong because Adam and Eve already had that and it won't be a temptation if that is what satan was promising them so the question is what was satan promising them satan was promising eve now this is very important that they will know good and evil in the same sense in which yahweh elohim that god almighty in the same way in the same sense in which god himself knows good and evil in other words, it was, it was promising them that they will be upgraded in their knowledge of good and evil. They will be like the most high in their knowledge of good and evil. So then, obviously, the obvious question will then be, in what way, in what sense does God know good and evil? Man knows good and evil as a set of principles over and above himself that he discovers. Man knows good and evil as a law keeper and this is very very important man knows good and evil either as a law keeper or as a law breaker but god knows good and evil as a law giver and now this is very very important as human we know good and evil either as a law keeper or as a law breaker good and evil is a set of principle over and above us that we discover that is the way we know good and evil. But for God, God knows who good and evil because good and evil, nothing is above God. God knows good and evil from above. God knows good and evil as a law giver. Good and evil are good and evil only because God decrees them to be so as expression of his own character and his own wisdom. And this is very, very important. Good and evil are good and evil because God decreed them to be so. And as an expression of his own character and wisdom. So what we are saying is that God is the ultimate rule maker. Remember what we said. God knows good and evil as the lawgiver, 
as the rule maker. God is the ultimate rule maker. As one created in the image of God, man responds by saying, not my will be done, but your will be done. So we know good and evil from below. God knows good and evil from above. We know good and evil as a law keeper or a law breaker. God knows good and evil as a law giver. And this is really very, very important for us to understand. So what Satan was selling to Eve, what Satan was appealing to Eve, what Satan was, you know, tempting Eve with is to rebel against this order. That is that is what Satan was offering. Rebel against this order. This order of God being the ruler and you being the receiver, being the one that obeyed the rule. And he's saying that we, you need to break this order by acquiring the same wisdom as God so that they no more wait for or take order or obey order from God. Rather, they will be like God. They now give the order and they make the rule. So that they will not experience good and evil from below. They will not experience good and evil as somebody that takes order and obey it or in the negative sense take order and break it which is evil but this time around they will be like god they will be the one that gives the order they will be the one that makes the rule in other words they become like gods they will make up their own personal moral code <laughs> do you see where we are going with this you'll be like god they will become autonomous of god the image of god in them is thereby shattered so that their connection with God is severe because God made them in his own image so that they can have communion with him. God made them in his own image so that they can commune with him, so that they can obey him, so that they can rule under him, so that they can respond to him. Now, the devil was offering them something different. And should Eve obey, should Eve agree with the devil it will rupture it will shatter the image of god in human what the devil was offering them this knowledge is a declaration of independence from the god almighty it's a declaration of independence from the lord god almighty in himself before what he was doing is that he was saying not my will but your will be done now it is not your will but my will be done because now we are God's. It is not what God said is good, but what seems good to me. This is what is wrapped up in that word, you know, that the devil was offering them, that they will be as God, knowing good and evil. It is not what God said is good. It is what seems good to me. God instituted order in creation for the enjoyment of the world. God instituted order for us to enjoy the world that God has created. We have to obey, we have to submit to the order that God has created. Order in family, order in nation, order, order, order. And that is the way we enjoy God's goodness. That's the way we enjoy God's provision. And that was the way Adam and Eve up till now have been enjoying the goodness and the provision of God in this garden of pure delight. At its root, sin and evil is an invasion of this order. It's a rejection of God's ordained order. And this is what we call disorderliness. This is lawlessness. We don't want the way God has created it. We don't want the way God has made it. We don't want what God said should be a family. God said this man and woman. We said, no, we don't want that. God said this is what a man is in a relationship of husband and wife. This is what a woman is. We don't want that. And that is what is at the root of sin. Is an invasion, a rebellion, a rejection of the order that God has put in place. And we call that disorderliness. We call that lawlessness. And that eventually leads to confusion, leads to chaos, leads to darkness, leads to death. And is that not what we are seeing around us today? Is that not what we are seeing? The world around us, this is what the world around us celebrates. What do we hear in the world today? The world around us celebrates, I did it my own way. 
if it feels good, do it. It is my life. It is my body. Nobody will tell me how to live my life. Nobody will tell me what to do with my body. I am the master of my own life. This is the spirit of what the devil offered if it is no more what god wills it is what we what we want this is them knowing good and evil this is the way god knew good and evil and this is what tempted eve in the garden people in the world today they are willingly oblivious to the consequences of their disorderliness they are willingly the word is willingly they are willingly blind to the consequences of their rebellion, their disorderliness, their lawlessness. Don't give me, don't tell me what to do. I will do it my own way. I'm the master of my life. This is the reason why there is chaos and confusion and darkness and evil and wickedness and, and death in our world today. Because we don't want to hear what God said about system, about homes, about education, about law, about 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 legal, legal proceeding, about everything we don't want we don't want we've kicked god out of our system out of our nation out of our country we don't want god and that is the reason why despite all the technological advancement that we have today this is the reason why there's still so much evil and darkness and pain in our world today and this has become even worse in this age of postmodernism postmodernism is an age of relativism it's an age of subjectivity they believe that beliefs are ultimately a matter of social contest. What is right for us might not be right for you. What is right for you might not be right for us. What is wrong for us may actually be beneficial for you. This is what postmodernism is all about. It's about relativism. It's about subjectivity. There is no ultimate truth. It's an age that rejects absolute truth. The age less concerned about thinking systematically and logically. This age in which we live. Unfortunately, this has invaded the church today in what is termed the progressive Christianity. In what is termed the emergence churches. No, there's nothing progressive about it. It is regressive. Why? Because we have inverted it. We want it our own way. We want to do it our own way. So let's summarize satan's modus operandi what have we seen number one the devil brings in doubt that's the first thing number two he arose desire evil desire in the in the heart of eve and number three he incited rebellion and disobedience and this is this is what the devil have done and this is what the devil is still doing today bringing doubt through all sort of you know all sort of ideologies through all sort of beliefs, through all sort of understanding that is invading our world today and even invading our church today, bringing doubt, destroying, and this is very important, destroying the foundation that our fathers have built, all in the name of civilization, all in the name of enlightenment, doubt about God, doubt about creation, doubt about salvation doubt about life doubt about gender and the, the 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 list goes on and on then he he aroused ungodly desire in the heart of men ungodly sexual desire ungodly emotional desire ungodly academic desire and the list go on and on and on and then it incites rebellion and disobedience against everything that is righteous, against everything that is holy, against everything that is good. And they, we have turned wrong to be right, and we have turned right to be wrong. And this is what we see in our world today, and this was what was happening as we saw it in the Garden of Eden. So, the stage, the stage is absolutely set. The trap is complete. The bait has been placed in full view of Eve. The question is, how will Eve respond? But there's another question. Is, haven't you noticed something that up till now we've not mentioned Adam? We've, the name of Adam has not cropped up in this story so far. We've been doing this teaching now for a few days with respect to the fall. But it's been the conversation between Eve and the serpent. The question is, where was Adam during this encounter? Where was Adam? 
throughout all these things that were going on, why didn't we hear the voice of Adam? Where was Adam during this encounter? And why did Satan approach Eve and not Adam? Or even both of them together? Or did he approach both of them together? Those are some of the questions we are going to be asking ourselves. And then we will ask ourselves, in the long run, does it really matter? Does it really matter that whether it was Eve alone that the serpent tempted first or that he tempted both of them? Does it really matter? Does it really matter who he tempted first? We are going to answer some of these questions, as it were, because these questions are very, very important. They are very, very important for us to understand the story from the beginning. Remember that we said the creation of human was consequence to a question that was raised before human was created. There was a question that was raised in the person of Satan, in the person of devil, in the person of the first rebellion that took place in heaven. Remember that. And we must not rupture the story from that. The creation of human was consequence to that. And we said that God was aware that all this that was going on, the fall and all this that was taking place did not take God by surprise. And that they are actually working out together the will of God. And what we have seen today, actually, is to see the ultimate that the devil was offering Eve. He was offering her independence. Being the ultimate rule maker of their own life. We can make the rule. We can decide on our own moral code. You don't tell me how I can dress. You don't tell me what I can do with my own body. Okay, if it feels good, do it. And that is the lie. We are, we are gods, you know. We run our own life. Nobody tells us what to do. And that is the age, that is the generation in which we live. It's a generation that, that rebel against authority. Authority figures are breaking down. Unfortunately, it is this order that actually upholds our society. What we represent in our own society as constitution. But even leaders in our days, they break constitution, they break the law w- with impunities. Now they, they, they want to t- call the common men and women to the law, but they broke the law. This is the spirit of Antichrist. We don't want God. We don't want God. We want to be God. We are God. We are our own God. We are our own rule maker. If you are the one that make the rule, if the rule doesn't work for you, you change the rule. Okay, if the rule doesn't work for you, you change it <laughs> as long as as long as you are the one that makes the rule. But that is not the way this works. And what I'm saying is that such a way of life have dire consequences. Because the law and the order that God created in the world is for our own good, is for our own glory. And when we broke it, when we broke that order, what result from that is death. What result from that is darkness, is evil, is, is, is confusion. That is what, excuse me, that is what result from that. It's just like a cancer. What is a cancer? A cancer is a cell that has ruptured itself from the room. That is it. A cancer is not something that came from the outside. It's a normal cell in the body. Every cell in our body is under authority. You know that man told Jesus, I'm a man under authority. Every cell in our body are under authority. Of systems, of hormones, of things that goes on in our body. But a cancer cell suddenly decides that I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to divide, I'm going to reproduce, I'm going to expand any way I want. And what result? Death. Destruction. Because while you are doing that, that disorderliness begin to destroy all the other cells, all the other system, all the other organs around it, and even further from it. That is the spirit that the devil was introducing. But remember what we said when he introduced this to Eve, he, he didn't tell Eve all the truth. But Eve could have asked questions. Eve could have probed the question. Or Eve, like I said, could have sent the, 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 the serpent packing. Get out. I trust God. I believe God. And go and ask God and go and have that conversation with God. But no, Eve did not ask the right question. And listen to me. The the way we ask questions is very, very important. And I've said this before. Christianity 
wants you to ask questions. You will not learn. The way we ask questions actually determine how we learn. We need to know how to ask questions. When people come against our faith, you can ask them questions. You can ask the question to expose their, their hypocrisy. You can ask them questions to expose their wickedness and their subtlety and their evil. That doesn't mean that they will necessarily change, but they may change. They may be convicted by the Holy Spirit. You know, oftentimes people come against our faith and they ask us questions. As if we must be the one answering their question. But you ask them questions. You want me to tell you where God comes from? You, you prove to me that there is no God. You prove to me that this system came out of Big Bang, out of nothing. No, they don't have an answer. A whole lot of their strength in, is, in, is in trying to come against our belief. It's not that they offer any answer. Okay, they want to get rid of God. What answer do they have? They want to get rid of the cross of Jesus. What, an, what answer do they have for salvation? You know, I was talking to a Muslim fellow a few days ago, and we were discussing. And he, he was talking about, I have my religion, you have your religion. And one of the things I was telling him, that let me tell you something. The issue here, the fundamental issue here is understanding what the problem is. What exactly is the problem that we are trying to deal with? If you think that the problem is just a superficial one, then fine. You can stick a plaster on it. You can get a teaching from, from, from a prophet and that will be okay. I mean, Jesus has teaching. But what the Bible tells me is that our problem is very deep. That we have been broken inside. And that we cannot be repaired by just listening to teaching. Teaching are good. Okay. But what good is teaching when we cannot obey it? Okay, I mean, a car, a car engine has been knocked. What good is it if you change the, you know, the, the, the upholstery? What good is it if you paint the car? The, the engine is knocked. Okay, all those things will not benefit. You change the tire, you change the lightning. That car is going nowhere until you do something with the engine. Praise the Lord. I'm going to stop there by the grace of God today. And next time by the grace of God we are going to be looking into this question that we ended with what would be what would be Eve's response would she fall for Satan's lie would she swallow these lies you know hook line and sinker and then we ask ourselves the other question what about Adam where was he where was Adam during the time all this conversation is going on, I cannot wait to go into that. And if you are listening to me today, believe me, God has your best interest at heart. For God so loved the world. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. The thief is a thief. He only wants to destroy you. God loves you, wants to save you. Ask him. If, if you have questions, ask him. He will answer. If you are honest, he will get the answer across to you. He will send people. He will send books. Maybe this, that's why you are listening to this message. Today. He will answer you. Ask him to be your Lord and God and Savior. He will come. Be your Lord. Save you. Do that deep work in you. You know, that thing that is dead in us by his cross. Take it out. Give you a new heart. And then you can begin to respond to his teaching. Do it tonight. Do it today. 